Well, why did people think that the universe was eternal at that time? Well, you have to remember back in the early 1900s, the way that people thought about things was through a Newtonian lens, right? We're more familiar nowadays with Albert Einstein. When we talk about somebody who's really intelligent, it's like, oh, that's the next Albert Einstein, right? But if you go back to the early 1900s, it was Isaac Newton who was regarded as the ultimate genius, really, of mankind. It's, it's, it is remarkable the things that Isaac Newton accomplished, uh, developing calculus and such, and that's what he's probably most famous for, but he did all sorts of science and mathematic, mathematics, and his discoveries are remarkable. And he was the one who was elevated as the ultimate genius, and Newtonian physics ruled the day. And so people just thought in terms of Newtonian physics in the early 1900s. And if you're familiar with Newtonian physics, the idea basically is that space and time are just these static parts of the stage, if you will. Space and time were just static and they went on forever. Space was eternal and infinite. Time was eternal and infinite. And so space and time was just like this fixed stage, this fixed background, if you will, in which matter moved around in. So space and time were like this stage, and then all the motion, all of us and the things that were taking place were just moving around on that fixed stage. Space, in a Newtonian sense, was understood to be a three-dimensional volume that just goes infinitely in every direction. And then time, they thought of as a one-dimensional thing that went on infinitely, uh, both to the future and to the past. And that was the thinking of the time. That is what ruled the day, this new Newtonian sort of physics. But what's happened over the last hundred years is all of that has been scientifically proven to be false. And so I want to show you a lot of these scientific discoveries that have taken place over the last hundred years that has proven scientifically that the universe had a beginning, that space, time, and matter are not infinite and all, in fact, had a beginning at the beginning of the universe. In fact, that's how people think of the universe. The universe just is space, time, and matter, and all of that had a beginning at the beginning of the universe. So the story begins with the, the new genius of mankind, right? We went from Isaac Newton to Albert Einstein. And the story begins with his theory of general relativity, relativity that was published in 1915. Now, we're not going to dive into the details. And there's some times where I feel like when I study his theory uh, of relativity, I feel like I almost have it. <laughs> but then it's like a wisp of smoke and it just goes... Uh, disappears again. It's very complicated and it's hard to get your mind around. We're not going to dive into those sort of details. But I do want you to understand at least the basics that in his original equations, his original mathematics that he put together as he orchestrated and put together his theory of general relativity, his original mathematical equations indicated that the universe was expanding, which implies that the universe had a beginning. So his original mathematical model, his original mathematical equations indicated that the universe was expanding, which meant that if you reverse time, it would go back to a singularity, that the universe came really from nothing, ultimately. But he knew that couldn't be right, because again, everybody was under this Newtonian way of thinking that the universe was eternal. And so he knew those equations had to be wrong, those conclusions had to be wrong. So what he did is he inserted a fudge factor into his equations to make it work out such that the universe was eternal. And as you'll see, he realized later that that was a huge mistake. Because shortly thereafter, evidence started coming in that the universe wasn't eternal. One of the first pieces of evidence came from this gentleman, Vesto Slifer, Slifer, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. But he shared a particular discovery, and this is famous now, at the American Astronomical Society. And this discovery he made was as follows. 
He discovered that all the galaxies that he studied out in space were moving away from the Earth, and some of them at fantastical speeds. Some of the galaxies he studied were moving away from Earth up towards 2 million miles an hour. And everywhere he looked, everywhere he pointed his telescope, everything he looked at, it was all moving away from us. And again, that is evidence that the universe is expanding. Okay. At the same time, another astronomer, this one's probably more famous, the Hubble Space Telescope was named after him, Edwin Hubble. He's the guy, if you're ever looking at old pictures like this, he's the guy that always has a pipe in his mouth. <laughs> So he's just well known for uh, being a pipe smoker, Edwin Hubble. One of the things that he discovered is that the farther away a galaxy is from us, the faster it's moving away from us. Again, evidence that the universe is expanding. Now, this idea that the universe is expanding implies that the universe has a beginning. Again, because if, if the universe is expanding now, if you just roll time backwards, everything collapses down to a singularity, ultimately saying that the universe came out of nothingness, really. So that's how all this evidence for an expanding universe pointed to the universe having a beginning. Now, one of the things that helped Hubble come to this conclusion is called the Doppler effect. Now, you're probably familiar with the Doppler effect when it comes to sound, right? So just take a, a, a car, for instance. Um, if a car is stationary, right? If we would go out to the parking lot right now and there would be a car running, we could all surround the car, right? And the noise would pretty much sound the same to all of us, no matter where we were standing, right? Because of the sound waves would all be hitting us similarly. And so the, the car running would have a similar sound. However, if we stood out here, maybe closer to the highway, and listened to a car coming, and you know this experience, you've had this experience before, when it's coming towards you, it's pushing the waves together so they're shorter and a higher pitch. And then when they're leaving you, it's stretching them out so it's the longer waves and a lower pitch, right? So I'll just do it right here. So just remember what it, what it sounds like, right? So it's And that's the Doppler effect when it comes to sound. But the same thing happens with light because light is also a wave. And so when we see something that's coming towards us, the light waves are shortened. You can think of them as being squished together. That's not scientifically accurate, but just so we can conceptualize it. The waves are being squished together. So it's moved towards the violent end of the light spectrum, the purple end, right? But if we observe something that's moving away from us, it elongates the waves and shifts what we're looking at more towards the red end of the light spectrum, where the waves are longer. And so what these early astronomers were seeing was that the galaxies, everything they looked at in space, was shifted towards the red end of the light spectrum. And so this is how they came to the conclusion that everything was receding away from us and receding from each other. Again, everything is expanding. Space itself, it's not, it's not just that Again, we're so stuck in a Newtonian way of thinking, it's hard to break out of that. But don't just think of space as the static thing and the, the galaxies are, are in space moving away from each other. No, it's that space itself is expanding. I know it's very hard to wrap your minds around, but that's the, I, the brilliance of Einstein to be able to discover and understand this, that space itself is expanding, the universe is expanding which is moving the things away from each other. But again, if you roll that back in time, the universe collapses in on itself in a singularity. So all of these discoveries were pointing to the universe having a beginning. 
So Hubble saw that everything through his telescope shifted to the red end of the light spectrum. Now I want to move on to two gentlemen, just this uh, history of scientific discoveries. There were two gentlemen who discovered the solutions to Einstein's equations separately that described an expanding universe. One of them was Alexander Friedman, and the other one was George LeMay. Now, George LeMay, you should be familiar with him. He's a, he was a physics professor and a Catholic priest. And he's the one who made the connection between an expanding universe solution of Einstein's equations and Hubble's observations. So in other words, he was the first one to propose what we call now the Big Bang Theory. Now, unfortunately, and I don't understand exactly how this happened, but among Christians, the Big Bang Theory has taken on a bad reputation as somehow it's an explanation opposed to God. But in fact, the first person who proposed it was a Catholic priest. So it's not a theory that's opposed to God. It's more like a theory of how God created the universe. So don't ever think that the Big Bang Theory is opposed to our faith. The Big Bang Theory might be an odd name for the theory, but it's very much complementary and conducive to our faith that the universe was created out of nothing by an almighty God. So it was these two gentlemen who really put together universe, um, Einstein's equations, such that they worked out with an expanding universe and connected, connected them with Hubble's observations through his telescope. Now, Einstein was very opposed to this at first. Einstein argued vehemently against this, right? Because everybody knew, again, at the time, everybody thought they knew the universe was eternal. And so Einstein published papers against the Big Bang Theory. He didn't like an expanding universe. Nobody liked this idea. But more and more evidence came in that this was just how things were, and so people had to come to grips with it. Ultimately, Einstein looked through, who's the guy with the pipe? <laughs> Hubble. He looked through Hubble's space telescope, and then finally, in 1930, after years of arguing against it, Einstein finally admitted he had been wrong the whole time and admitted that, in fact, the universe is expanding. And he said that the fudge factor that he put in his equations, they would work out the universe was eternal, was the greatest blunder of his life. Because you think about it, if he would have stuck with the original form of his equations, he would have been the one who discovered and proved that the universe had a beginning. But he goes down in history as making that mistake and then not being the one who discovered that. He still has a huge part to play, and it was a lot of his equations that got people thinking that direction, but it was these other scientists who had to convince him based on the evidence that the universe had a beginning. Now, there's a lot more scientific discoveries, and the book goes through a lot more of them in detail, but for sake of time, I'm going to zip through them. The fact of the matter is now, 100 years later, virtually everybody agrees that the universe had a beginning. I don't think there is a scientist alive who thinks that the universe is eternal anymore. Everybody agrees that the universe had a beginning. A contemporary astronomer says it this way. He says, with the proof now in place, cosmologists can no longer hide behind the possibility of a past eternal universe. There is now no escape. They have to face the problem of a cosmic beginning. You may say, well, why is it a problem that the universe had a beginning? Well, because they realize it points to something that is outside the universe. In other words, the universe can't be the ultimate thing if it had a beginning. The universe can't be the supreme being that is uncaused because it had a beginning. It had to have been caused. So it's a problem for those who believe that there's nothing beyond the universe. 